G'day guys and gal. Some of the Space Marine Legions and chapters out there went under considerable levels of thought and clever planning by GW before their creation. Their names and heraldry linking to their personality and aesthetics in subtle interesting ways. The Raven Guard were not one of these. With a preference for flying, having beaked helmets, wearing black and their Primarch's name literally translating to Raven, like if you google Corvus Corax you'll be given images of black cranky birds. It's clear that GW didn't pull out all their wit and thought into this one. However, life doesn't always need to be witty or clever. Sometimes simple is good, and whilst our boys in black seem to be obsessed with the bird, which is likely extinct in the 40th millennium, they are still really interesting and original. One of the few Space Marine Legions that actually use common sense to their advantage, and despite getting shreked numerous times, still manage to pull off some dramatic and insane counterattacks, including one of my favourite ever moments from Warhammer 40k, which I'll speak about this video. Today we're going to talk about the Raven Guard, their origins, and what they did during the Great Crusade in Horus Heresy. We'll also discuss the life of their Primarch, Raven McRavenface, and what he's currently up to. Spoilers, he's basically a loyalist demon at this point, and I am vibing it hard. Let's get into it. Long ago, before the Emperor was a massive strain on the Imperium's public healthcare system, and the Tyranids weren't trying to gobble everyone down like some thirsty white girl with daddy issues, the non-disabled God Emperor of Mankind! got a bit frisky for some good old-fashioned galactic domination. Hence, he harvested his own seed and used it to create 20 demigod children, all with their own variety of personality disorders. However, the galaxy is a big place with a number of entities that don't want to get dominated. The first and foremost of these beings were called the Gods of Chaos, and they used some dark voodoo to yeet the baby Primarchs across the galaxy with the help of the Primarch's mummy, who was suffering from some hectic postnatal depression. One of these Primarchs was called Raven. No, not the skimply dressed teen titan nor the random 2003 beloved sitcom. No, this Raven was significantly more violent and way cooler than those two. In reality, his name was Corvus Corax, but I'm trying to be original here. Raven landed on a habitable moon orbiting a technically advanced forge world, which had a serious slavery problem. Corvus was found by a group of slave miners who saw that a randomly overly mature space baby was probably something worth keeping away from the slave overlords, hence they adopted him as their own. As he grew obscenely quickly and was overall a bit of a demigod, the slaves praised him as their future saviour and had hoped that one day he would free them. No pressure, Raven. Now, each Primarch had their own unique abilities and powers. Some were subtle and uncool, such as Gilliman's organizational skills, whereas others were very obvious and quite epic, such as Sanguinius having literal angel wings and the ability to see the future. Korax had a subtle yet epic ability where he could will himself to be invisible to the human eye. This would later get upgraded to some kind of demonic ascension, but for now it made pranks really easy to pull off, or, you know, a slave revolt. Using this power, Raven avoided detection and sabotaged a lot of the key defences in the slave prisons until eventually a violent uprising occurred and the moon was liberated from the slave overlords. Now that was cool and all, but a desolate moon full of slaves ain't worth shit when compared to a forge world with a large army commanded by salty ex-slave owners. Fortunately for Raven, his little moon housed a number of thermonuclear bombs. Raven struggled with his next decision, used the bombs killing thousands and forcing the forge world to surrender, Hiroshima style, or save the thousands and fight the forge world, likely getting wrecked. Kill thousands of innocents now, or let them live, however doom millions of innocents to slavery for the following generations. Before Corvus could decide, the Big E dropped in was like, yo, Raven, nice work with the whole uprising fiasco. Seems like you're struggling on the decision to nuke the forge world or not. I personally would nuke them because it's funny, and also you get to live and command an army of raven men. Or maybe the convoy went like, oh shit, sorry, sorry son, I came a day early, do your thing. We don't really know for sure, but either way, the Emperor left Raven, and Raven cosplayed as King Jom Un as he unleashed fiery nuclear death upon the forge world below, forcing it to surrender, and it was subsequently absorbed by the Imperium. Before Raven led his little uprising, however, his sons were active in kicking ass. They fought in the Unification Wars of Terror, acting as assassins and scouts, winning many wars before they even started by slaughtering the enemy commanders. They were already very similar to Raven's style of warfare, with the exception that they were very oppressive over the enemies they defeated, watching them closely and instantly violently crushing any signs of dissonance. They served for a long time under Horus and his Lunar Wolves, acting as stealth and infiltration wing of the Legion for some time, until Daddy Raven was found. 
Despite the similarities in warfare and stealth tactics, Raven's assimilation of the Raven Guard was not smooth. The Legion Master was replaced as well as most of the commanding officers due to the fact that the Legion's culture of oppression reminded Raven of his previous slave overlords, which he wasn't super down with. However, after this little reshuffle, the Legion worked together incredibly well, their insane stealth being boosted even further by special variants of Imperial technology such as the Shadowhawk, a stealth Thunderhawk, or the Whisper Cutter, silent jetpacks. The Raven Guard's tactics were so unique that the Raven was able to beat Gilliman, easily considered the greatest commander of all the Primarchs, in three simulated matches. After those three, however, Raven would never win again. Fortunately for the Raven Guard, their homeworld, the one taken directly by Raven Daddy, was a unique forge world that directly supplied the Raven Guard with gear, hence they had a constant stream of goodies coming to them. The Raven Guard were not the biggest legion, nor did they win the most hectic battles of the Great Crusade. They were highly specialized and usually directed towards conquering planets with high strategic value, i.e. planets that didn't want to be orbitally bombed or massacred via World Eater deployment. Ironically, it was the Istvan system that the Raven Guard brought into compliance, the very same system where they would eat mega dicks at the start of the Horus Heresy. However, before they ate said mega dicks at Istvan, they would first eat mega dicks on a different planet. One of the planets that Horus had brought into compliance had become infested with a Xenoparasite that mind controlled the population. This was a direct insult to Horus, who was now the War Master after clapping significant green skin cheeks at Ulanor. His massive ego resulting in the commitment of four legions of space marines to the campaign. He ordered the Raven Guard to more or less jump into a meat grinder in order to distract the enemy and allow Horus to kill the Xeno leader. Corvus wasn't super keen on a plan which seemed more suited for anger on Oleman, a plan that completely disregarded his legion's stealth and warfare doctrines, however his other Primarch brothers bullied him and called him a pussy, so he agreed to the plan anyway. Many of the old Terran-born Raven Guard, the ones that were more oppressive and more bloodthirsty, requested to be at the front lines as they seemed super keen to follow Horus' orders. The Raven Guard attacked, and whilst they took their objective and allowed Horus to kill the Xeno Commander, they lost so many Space Marines that they became the smallest legion overall. As a silver lining to this, most of the dead Raven Guard were the bloodthirsty Terran-born Marines, who were in Erebus's super heretical Warrior Lodges, the same Warrior Lodges that would rise up and try convert the legions to Horus's cause. Hence, the Raven Guard had more or less purged itself of the Marines that would likely one day betray it. Nice. On top of that, Horus's plan and its consequences for the Raven Guard resulted in Corvus hating Horus, making it even more difficult for Horus to one day try to convince Corvus to join his cause. The final notable campaign for the Raven Guard before they got absolutely finger blasted by the Legion of Evil Bold Cunts was when they tested out the Mark VI power armor. When the Mark VI armor was tested by the Iron Warriors and Salamanders, they didn't like it because it traded durability for mobility. Iron Warriors and Salamanders are big walking tanks, so it's not hard to see why it was, this was an issue for them. The Raven Guard were given the armor as a final test, and to everybody's surprise, except for the readers, the Mark VI worked perfectly for them and their stealth operations, hence the armor was renamed to the Corvus armor and was given beaked helmets, because you know, ravens have beaks. The Great Crusade was coming to an end, so Horus decided now was a good time to pledge his soul to the forces of Hell and doom the galaxy to eternal war and suffering. And he was joined by half the Primarchs, proving that just because you're a demigod with supreme intellect doesn't make you immune from being a dumb cunt. In response to Horus declaring Jihad on the Emperor, the Big E sent the Salamanders, Raven Guard, and Iron Hands to the Istvan system, the same system Korax had personally brought into compliance. They were to be the vanguard against the Lunar Wolves, now called the Sons of Horus due to Horus' massive ego, as well as the Empress Children, the World Eaters, and the Death Guard, with the Night Lords, Word Bearers, and Iron Warriors and Alpha Legion soon to arrive to back up the Loyalists. Except that they didn't, and instead severely gang raped them. I mean, probably should have seen it coming. If Fulgrim, Daddy's biggest ass kisser, could betray the Emperor, it was likely that Salty Perturabo, Batchet Insane Conrad, Sneaky Alfarius, and Pedophile Lorgar would do the same. 
The Loyalists landed with the Raven Guard attacking from the flank, the Iron Hands in the center, and the Salamanders on the other flank. The battle was hectic, with thousands of Space Marines dying every minute, and the Loyalists even looked to be winning, as despite the traitors having an extra legion, they all had to purge about one third of themselves before this battle, as those one third were considered too loyal. On top of that one third purge, it didn't go very well and lots of the Traitor Marines died during said purge, so until the second wave of Traitor Legions arrived, the Loyalists looked to be winning. That win quickly went to shit however as the newly arrived four Traitor Legions opened fire on the rear of the Loyalists and tore them to shreds. To make matters worse, Ferris got decapitated by Fulgrim and Vulcan got a nuke dropped on him. Korax is actually a bit of a monster in combat here, hence when Lorgar and his word bearers attack the Raven Guard and unleash their elite warriors, the possessed Gal Vorbach, upon Korax, Korax completely raped them, killing most of the Gal Vorbach in seconds and not breaking a sweat. Lorgar was like, oh shit, not the Gal Vorbach, hence he charged Korax and engaged him in a duel. This was to be a bad call by Lorgar, who was not known for his dueling ability. Korax impaled Lorgar with his lightning claw and began shredding him from the inside out. In response, Lorgar tried to choke Korax while headbutting him. Korax didn't even flinch, even as his face was crushed by the headbutts. Eventually, Korax was able to sever Lorgar's spine with his claws, as they were still inside the bald pedo. Before Korax could finish him off, Conrad intervened and Korax was forced to retreat, using his invisibility power to great effect. Most of the Raven Guard died that day with only 3,000 survivors. They retreated from the battlefield but could not leave the planet, hence they performed hit and run tactics on the enemy before digging in and hiding. After three months they were discovered by Angron of all people, hence prepared to meet their fate. However, fate had a different idea, as a Raven Guard rescue force arrived and evacuated the remaining birdmen from the planet. What they didn't know, however, is that the Alpha Legion had planted some agents within the Raven Guard, which would cause massive problems for them down the track. Now for one of my favourite moments in Warhammer 40k, the Raven Guard were on their way to Terra as Corvus wanted to petition the Emperor to help rebuild his legion, but they had to deal with a word bearer ship on the way. Did Corvus board the enemy's ship and kill them from the inside? No. Did he bomb them from afar? Also no. The sly dog instead rapidly accelerated towards them and just before they would collide, he made his ship warp jump. Now at 40k, when you warp jump, you basically open up a portal to the warp, turn on your Geller fields and then go on through. The portal that Corvus opened sucked the word bearer ship into it as well. They did not have their Geller fields on. Going into the warp without your Geller fields is like going to Australia without putting on sunscreen. You're gonna have a shit one. And have a shit one the word bearers did as their human crew instantly went insane and killed themselves whilst the space marines felt sick for a while before they too were raped by hell. Corvus got to Terra and was given the original template for the Raven Guard gene seed. It was extremely pure and stable, hence the marines created with it were powerful and had a huge success rate. This is where the Alpha Legion issue comes into play. The Alpha Legion's agents tainted the gene stock with a demonic virus, meaning only 500 new Raven Guard were created before the gene stock was corrupted. This corruption mutated the new Raven Guard into demonic beings, however they were still loyal to the Raven Guard. Ironically, it was these very mutated Raven Guard who would prevent the Alpha Legion from destroying the rest of the Raven Guard's gene seed, hence saving the Legion. The mutated Raven Guard were still very effective in combat, and Corvus still considered them to be his sons. However, with his depleted forces, he decided that the best course of action would be to lead hit and run stealth attacks on the traitor armies. He did not take a part in the Battle of Terra. However, with only 4,000 marines, he did the job of a legion, cutting off supplies, troop transports, and being an overall pain in Horus's ass. Horus invades Terra, kills our glorious Hawk Boy, puts the Emperor in a wheelchair, and then gets completely wrecked by the Emperor's spirit bomb. The traitor legions are broken and they are hunted down eventually resulting in them being forced in the Eye of Terror where they remain, for the most part, to this day. Corvus was already a pretty grim and depressed guy, but now he had a bunch of mutated Raven Guard who were like, KILL ME! Hence Corvus personally mercy killed all of them. There was a really sad scene where one of the mutants was in a cell, and when Corvus entered it crawled towards him affectionately as it saw Corvus as its father. Corvus then sadly broke its neck. The loss and then culling of his legion drove Corvus to sit in his tower for an entire year and brood on the subject. He came to the conclusion that he stuffed up big time and that only by killing Lorgar could he find peace. Fair enough, I'm pretty happy with that conclusion. 
Hence Corvus went into the Eye of Terror and embraced his inner warp powers, allowing him to turn into a demonic raven shadow demon beast monster thingo and become even more of a problem to the bad guys. He solo invaded a demon world full of word bearers and began absolutely destroying them. Lorga came to his son's aid as he was now a demon primarch, and once again that didn't count for shit as Lorga once again got stomped and fled like a little bitch. It's believed that Lorga's absence from the setting in recent times is due to him hiding from Corvus, who still hunts him within the Eye of Terror to this day. With their Primarch gone, their legion smashed, and now their genes are deteriorating. Needless to say, it wasn't a good day to be a Raven Guard. They delved into their gene stock reserve and began slowly rebuilding their legion. As a side effect, however, they become very effective while working in small numbers. You know, they didn't really have a choice, but it's still worth something. With this small number, unfortunately our boys in black didn't get up to a whole lot in the past 10,000 years, often engaging with skirmishes against the Eldar and Tau as their more tactical approach to combat was better suited to this. That's not to say they don't have their moments, but they just aren't the poster boys currently. However, as they are one of the only loyalist legions with not only a confirmed living, but also seemingly overpowered Primarch, it is likely the return of Corvus will bring them front and center for a time. The Raven Guard did receive Primaris reinforcements with the return of Gilliman and continue to fight for the Emperor to this day under the watchful eye of their edgy emo chapter master, Kavian Shrike. And that does us for today guys, Corvus Corax and the Raven Guard. Obviously there is a lot more information about the Raven Guard as well as their many battles and wars that I couldn't compress into a 15 minute video, so I encourage you to go out and learn more if this video tickled your pickle. If you enjoyed this video, want to see some tits, and want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be. Only $1 gives you access to a boatload of Warhammer Hentai, and $10 gives you access to the Mage Kill Hentai calendar. Hit the subscribe button, then hit the real subscribe button for more stealthy content. Join the Discord for more memes, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.